I welcome you to the presentation on analysis of uh, determinate structures. So there's some time uh, that the video uh, file is being uh, loaded. Uh, yeah, I think now it is loaded. Uh, we will start the presentation. Sorry for the small delay uh, from the from from the studio end. Uh, today we will start with uh, some discussions related to uh, equilibrium, degree of indeterminacy, and then degree of static indeterminacy. Uh, if I am correct, in the last class we did make a small presentation on equilibrium but due to some technical problem I understand the uh, audio was not reachable so I am just trying to repeat a few slides before I start the discussion on how to calculate the degree of indeterminacy. Now I hope all of you understand what is an equilibrium. If a body is stationary we can try to say the body is in equilibrium. If you look at this simple example that we have here, we have a seesaw where two persons are sitting on the seesaw. So the positions of the uh, two persons sitting on the seesaw are so adjusted that the though the weights are different, the seesaw is remaining horizontal. It implies that the total upward force and the total downward force are same. That means the force acting upwards that is at the fulcrum F sub x p should be equal to the weight of the two bodies. So then only we try to say the body is in equilibrium. Now related to the concept extended with respect to structures, we try to say that all stationary structures are in equilibrium because the structures do not move in x direction, do not move in y direction, nor they rotate okay, about the z axis. I am talking about two dimension problems. So the necessary equations okay, that we normally think about here are the sum of all the forces in x direction should match. That means the external loads acting on the structure and the reactions that develop at the support. So that means there is no unbalanced force acting in the structure. Similarly, there is no unbalanced force in y direction, okay, that means which includes the action and the reactions and the moment, algebraic summation of mo all moments about any point, okay, equal to 0, that means the structures do not rotate. So normally we try to use these three equations to determine the unknowns in a particular problem which are nothing but the support reactions. For example, if we just try to consider a simply supported beam as shown in figure with some loading, there are three reactions that we have here, two, or two reactions at A because it is a hinge and one reaction at B because it is a roller. So totally there are three reactions that we are trying to talk about here. So we have three equilibrium equations okay, at our disposal. So we try to use okay, the three equations, equilibrium equations to determine the numerical values of okay the three reactions BA, HA and BB. So once you determine this so it is possible for us to calculate the internal forces okay in the beam that is nothing but the bending moments and shear force okay and okay the deformation that is the deflection and rotation at any point in the beam. Okay now coming to the discussion okay regarding de uh, degrees of indeterminacy. Basically, there are two types of indeterminacy. That is degree of static indeterminacy and degree of kinematic indeterminacy. Now, depending upon which method you are trying to consider for the analysis, you will be trying to calculate the appropriate degrees of indeterminacy. For example, if you are working the example using force method, we normally try to calculate the degree of indeterminacy using Okay, static method that is degree of static indeterminacy is normally used. However, if we are using displacement method of analysis, we normally try to use degree of kinematic indeterminacy. 
okay so let me take you through okay regarding how we normally try to calculate the degree of static indeterminacy now we have got different types of problems coming up the first one is pin jointed plane truss i hope all of you are very familiar regarding pin jointed plane truss okay so generally we have two methods or approaches using which we try to calculate the degree of static indeterminacy the first one okay is approach 1 in approach 1 we try to split or we try to divide okay the degree of indeterminacy into two parts that is d sub x s is equal to d sub x e plus d sub x s i okay d sub x s e stands for the degree of external indeterminacy and d sub x s i indicates the degree of internal indeterminacy okay so just try to uh, look at okay this so d s e stands for degree of external indeterminacy dsi stands for degree of internal indeterminacy so let us try to understand how we try to calculate the degree of external indeterminacy and internal indeterminacy for pin jointed plane truss now in case of external indeterminacy that is d sub x sc we try to calculate the value as r minus 3 there is nothing but the total number of independent reactions minus number of equilibrium equations please understand what we are considering here is a plane truss okay two dimensional problem okay so when you just try to take a truss it will have some supports okay so uh, depending upon what kind of support you have you have to just try to consider the appropriate number of uh, reactions so total number of reactions is normally considered as r okay that is total number of independent reactions where three is nothing but the number of equilibrium equations that we have here now in case of trusses we can expect only two types of supports a hinge support and a roller support you cannot have a fixed support because okay as the name itself says we are talking about pin jointed plane truss each joint should be a pin joint so we cannot have a fixed joint over there so the kind of supports we can have here are hinge support and roller support okay you can have many supports okay more than two okay in case of trusses so at each hinge support we take two independent reactions and at each roller support we try to take one independent reaction now coming to dsi that is how we normally try to calculate the degree of static indeterminacy that is internal indeterminacy so we try to calculate the degree of static indeterminacy as total number of members minus minimum number of members in the truss okay for the given number of joints so that means it is possible to have more number of num more number of members in a truss than what is required that will constitute the degree of internal indeterminacy for example okay we try to calculate as m minus m dash so what is m m is something but the number of members we have in the truss what is m dash it is a minimum number of members required in the truss based on the number of joints that we have in the truss and this minimum number of joints for a truss okay is given by 2j minus 3 so we'll be trying to remember this equation dsi equal to m minus of 2j minus 3 please watch that bracket okay 2j minus 3 you have a bracket m minus of 2j minus 3 the 2j minus 3 is nothing but the minimum number of members that we need to have okay for a stable configuration of a truss okay is what we are trying to talk about for a given number of joints now for example if you just try to understand okay for the the least configuration that we can have in a truss is okay three joints and three members you cannot have a truss okay with less number of joints and less number of members so minimum required is three joints and three members now every additional joint you put in truss okay will constitute two members as you can clearly see in the next figure okay i'm slowly building up the truss so each joint i add additionally 
I'll be trying to put two more two more members. So we just try to look at the next one. So again, I put one more extra joint, and I'm trying to add okay two more members. So this is how you can go on building the trust. It's important to understand the basic configuration of a trust, which comprises of triangles. So the the stable trust basically comprises of many triangles which are built okay as you saw right now okay so this 2j minus 3 okay can be easily worked out okay based on this simple criteria so 2j minus 3 is applicable to each of these figures and you can understand that okay it satisfies that particular condition now one more important thing that we need to understand here is okay in trust problems whenever you are trying to calculate the value of degree of internal indeterminacy and if you get a value of zero okay a further check or inspection is to be made to see that all panels are independently statically determinate that means it comprises of triangular panels only okay we are going to just take an example okay to demonstrate okay this particular point okay in one of the problems that we are going to address now coming to approach to okay so in approach to which we also call as the unified method please understand okay we don't normally try to bifurcate the degree of indeterminacy as external and internal so we just try to calculate a number okay that is which comprise of both external indeterminacy and internal indeterminacy and it is calculated as m plus r minus 2j so what is m m is something but number of members in a trust please understand each member has only one unknown force so total number of unknown member force here is m and what is r r is something but the number of independent external reactions so in a trust problem the total number of unknowns would be m plus r now regarding the equilibrium equations okay so what is the amount total number of equilibrium equations that we can have at our disposal please understand if you just try to consider each of the pin joints that we are trying to have here consider the free body diagram of that you can apply two equilibrium equations okay because they are a concurrent force system okay right so you can expect sigma fx equal to 0 sigma f i equal to 0 so i can i can use two equilibrium equations at g each joint so the number of equations i can think of formulating is 2j so you can easily calculate okay the total number of uh, uh, degree of uh, indeterminacy static indeterminacy as m plus r minus 2j so this is how you can calculate now let me just try to take you through okay a couple of problems here where we try to calculate the degree of static indeterminacy now what you are trying to see on the uh, 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 figure here is a big a huge truss okay a pin jointed plane truss so please understand each and every joint is pin connected okay and uh, it has some particular configuration so the truss is supported at three points okay the left extreme point okay is a hinge we have a hinge here okay and we have got two supports here one roller and we got one more roller positioned here so totally there are three supports you can have as many supports as you want but i told you earlier the only type of supports we can have here are hinges and rollers okay so let's try to understand how we try to calculate the degree of uh, static indeterminacy for this problem okay so let's start with approach 1 in approach 1 we try to calculate degree of static indeterminacy as okay dsc plus dsi so as you know dsc is external and dsi is internal now just try to look at this dsc it's calculated as r minus 3 so what is our total number of reactions that we have here so how do we get the value for now look at this we have got one hinge and two rollers at each hinge we write two reactions and at each roller we write one reaction so we count okay here it is two hinge is two this roller plus one that would be three there is one more roller plus one four so the total number of r independent reactions will be four so four minus three is one so that means the structure is indeterminate externally by degree one that means you got one extra reaction than 
okay then then we talk about okay the the uh, for a determinate truss okay so let's try to uh, go ahead and then try to calculate the degree of internal indeterminacy so the degree of internal indeterminacy is calculated as m minus of 2j minus 3 okay so here we try to understand what is the total number of members that we have in the truss so physically we need to count here the number of members okay so that means at the bottom card we have eight members okay top cards you got two inclined and six horizontal members so put together eight and eight is 16 okay and there are seven vertical members so that would be 16 plus 7 is 23 and there are totally 12 diagonal members so 23 plus 12 is 35 so you can clearly see that okay the number of members we have is 35 here minus of 2j so number of joints so you can understand that okay at the bottom okay so we have got something like uh, nine joints okay at the top okay you have got uh, uh, seven joints so nine plus seven is 16 so it is 2 into 16 okay minus 3 so that will try to give us 6 okay so if you just try to add the two you get the total degree of indeterminacy as 1 plus 6 equal to 7 so that means this structure okay is having a static indeterminacy of 7 comprising of one external indeterminacy and six internal indeterminacy now please understand why we normally try to do this because okay when you're trying to solve indeterminate problems which you will be doing in the next semester is it all right okay you will be trying to make the structure determinate and how do we make determinate so we just try to remove okay appropriate number of forces okay external and internal to make the structure determinate so that means here basically okay since it is dsc is one so we try to remove one of the rollers okay and then is because dsi is uh, six okay we remove okay the six diagonal members where we have got two members okay in e these panels in the middle panels you've got two members so one of the members or diagonal members will be removed so it will be brought to what is called as degree of okay in a, into a determinate state now let's try to look at uh, solving the same problem okay using approach to in approach to so we have the expression m plus r minus 2j so we know what is m what is r and what is j we try to numerically substitute the values we already have counted so the number of members is 35 the number of reactions okay are 4 okay and the total number of joints is 16 so just try to uh, uh, do the simplification you get it as 7 so even in approach 2 we are trying to get the same number but the only thing that you need to understand here is okay we don't get the split okay the approach to between external and internal indeterminacy okay so let's try to go to the next example that is example 2 okay so in case of example 2 is it all right so i'm just trying to take one more problem here okay i'm just trying to give you uh, the same step so that you become very familiar so i'm just following approach 1 in approach 1 we try to say ds equal to dsc plus dsi you split the degree of indeterminacy as external plus internal and we try to calculate the external indeterminacy as r minus 3 so here we have got only two supports one hinge and one roller okay at hinge we account two reactions at roller we account one reaction so total number of reactions 2 plus 1 is 3 so 3 minus 3 is 0 so that means it is externally determinate you don't have more number of forces than the equilibrium equation so it is easily you can easily apply the equilibrium equations and try to calculate all the reactions over here now coming to the internal indeterminacy so we try to calculate as m minus of 2j minus 3 m is nothing but total number of members and 2j minus 3 is nothing but the minimum number of members that we need to have okay uh, to uh, to have a stable configuration of truss based on the given number of joints so here the number of members okay in this particular case okay is 21 so you got four uh, bottom cards four top cards five uh, vertical members okay and then eight uh, diagonal members so all put together you have got 21 okay and 10 joints is what we have here 
So if you just try to substitute, you get it as 4. So the degree of inter, uh, indeterminacy is 4. So if you just try to add the two, okay, you get the total number of indeterminacy. That is 0 plus 4 is 4. And how do we make the truss determinate internally? So to remove one of the diagonal members in each of the panels, okay, and then the truss becomes, okay, statically determinate, okay, internally also. Okay, now coming to approach 2, okay, we try to totally calculate the uh, total indeterminacy as m plus r minus 2j. So uh, here, okay, the number of members as we saw is 21. Uh, the uh, total number of reactions are 3 unknown reactions and total number of joints are uh, are 4, I mean 10 in this case and finally when you try to simplify you get the degree of internal indeterminacy, uh, total indeterminacy as 4. But again as we uh, just mentioned, okay, you cannot try to make out, okay, what is external indeterminacy and what is internal indeterminacy. You have to go on further, you have to further inspect, okay, and then try to determine the uh, external and internal indeterminacy based on this total value. Now coming to that interesting problem, I told you, okay, that we will be discussing this particular problem. So we have to be careful when you are trying to uh, work this kind of an example. So we are trying to calculate the degree of static indeterminacy for a pin jointed plane truss, okay, as shown in figure. Okay, so we are trying to use both approach 1 and approach 2. Now approach 1, okay, DS is DSC plus DSI, external plus internal, external R minus 3, okay, so there are only two supports, one hinge, one roller, so total number of reactions are 3, so 3 minus 3 is 0, this, the truss is determinate externally. Now coming to internal indeterminacy, so we try to normally calculate as M minus M dash or M minus of 2J minus 3, so if you just try to count totally there are 9 members and there are 6 joints, correct. So we just try to uh, substitute the values here and then you are trying to get a value 0 here. Okay, so that means external also it is 0, internal also it is 0. Okay, so the total degree of indeterminacy we try to say is 0. So whenever you get especially the internal indeterminacy is 0, you have to make an inspection and check whether you have triangles in all panels. Correct. So whenever you get DSI equal to 0, you have to be careful because some panels can have more members and some panels may not have uh, the minimum number of members. Correct. So we have got DSI equal to 0. So once you get DSI equal to 0, you have to do this check. Okay. So we just try to go to each panel and then check okay, whether you got triangular configurations. So just try to look at the right panel here. It's a rectangular panel. So you cannot have a rectangular panel in a pin jointed plane truss. Okay, it becomes unstable. When you try to move, okay, when you try to apply a load on this joint, okay, right, it collapses, right. So since the right panel, okay, is a rectangular panel, okay, please understand, okay, the truss is unstable. That is, it cannot take more load, okay. However, total number of members in the truss is sufficient, okay, to, to, con uh, to, to satisfy the condition M minus uh, to uh, m dash or m minus of 2j minus 3 okay right so uh, it, it tries to satisfy 2j minus 3 requirement okay but please understand the left panel has more number of members and the right panel has less number of members than what is required okay from stability point of view so this aspect we need to check okay in in cases where uh, the uh, internal indeterminacy becomes zero now again in, in this particular case we have got approach to you don't have external and internal indeterminacy okay so we just try to calculate okay the total value here and the total value okay is zero okay by substituting the appropriate values of okay m r and j that you had calculated in the previous approach and again you are trying to get a value zero so the moment you get a value zero again we want you to verify okay whether okay the the, the truss constitutes triangular panels Okay, so please understand. So one of the panel is uh, rectangle. So we try to again conclude that okay, the truss is unstable. So this is how you normally try to calculate the degree of static indeterminacy in case of trusses. Now let us try to go to the next exercise that we have here. That is how we normally try to calculate the degree of 
static indeterminacy in case of beams. So in approach 1, again we do the same thing. So again we will be trying to do both approaches, approach 1 and approach 2. So in case of approach 1, we try to split the degree of indeterminacy as external and internal. And regarding calculating the external indeterminacy, it is still the same. We try to use the equation R minus 3, where R is nothing but total number of independent support reactions. Okay, and 3 is nothing but the number of equilibrium equations okay that we have okay is what we are trying to talk about now coming to the uh, supports please understand you can have all three types of supports in this particular problem you can have a fixed support you can have a hinge support you can have a roller support in case of fixed support we normally try to take three reactions okay independent reactions hinge support we try to take two independent reactions Roller support, we try to take one independent reaction. Okay. Now coming to the internal indeterminacy, please note that the internal indeterminacy for beams is always zero. Okay. So DSI is always taken as zero. Right? Because it comes under open configuration. What do you mean by open configuration? Okay, the beam is free of loops or closed cell. It is one open uh, uh, structure okay so that means if you just start from any one point on the beam you cannot come back to the same point without retracing the path this is what we try to tell so beams are always under open configuration it is does not contain loops or closed cells so the internal indeterminacy is zero okay for all beam problems so it becomes very simple so that means we have said ds equal to dsc plus dsi dsi is always zero so for beams, the degree of indeterminacy, static indeterminacy directly depends on the degree of external indeterminacy. Right? Okay. So in case of approach 2, so we try to calculate the degree of static indeterminacy as another equation 3m plus r minus 3j. So what is this uh, 3m? Please understand. Okay. At e in each member, we have got three reactions okay that means an axial force okay a, a shear force and a bending moment and we are trying to apply three equations okay at each joint that's how we try to formulate this particular equation so please remember in approach to the equation that we would be using here is 3m plus r minus 3j okay so let's try to take some simple examples with respect to uh, beams so we've got a two span continuous beam that means uh, there are two uh, uh, two spans and three supports okay is what we have in this problem so we got one hinge and two rollers so let us look at example one okay in approach one so we try to say ds equal to dsc plus dsi and dsc is r minus three and and we try to take two numbers uh, 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 there were independent reactions as two in case of hinge support one each at roller so total number of R is 2 plus 1 plus 1 that would be 4 4 minus 3 is 1 the structure is statically determinate externally by 1 now coming to DSI it is 0 always so the value of DS is nothing but 1 plus 0 equal to 1 okay right it contains only external indeterminacy beams contain only external indeterminacy Coming to approach 2, so we try to say 3m plus r minus 3j. So number of members is 2. Okay, number of independent reactions are 4 as we computed in the last case. And uh, uh, the number of uh, uh, joints are 3, so 3 into 3. So that will try to put the value as 1. So again, here, okay, so this though we, we try to say that we don't get a split, but understand whatever the value you get here is totally uh, contributed to external independency. So please understand when, whenever you are trying to calculate this, you can use either approach 1 or approach 2. It's not that you have to use both approaches. Okay, but approach 1 is more comprehensive in the sense that, okay, you try to understand very clearly what is the total number of external independency and what is the total number of internal independency. Now coming to example 2, it's a three span continuous beam okay and we have a fixed support okay at the left extreme end so three roller supports okay so this is how 
we have got the supports in this particular case. So let me start with approach 1. In case of approach 1, okay, so we try to first calculate uh, DSC as usual. So the value of DSC is nothing but R minus 3, where R is nothing but the total number of independent reactions. So at, at fixed end, we count 3 reactions, a vertical reaction, a horizontal reaction and a moment. And in each roller, we have only vertical reactions. So totally we have got 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, that would be 6, okay. So R is 6, equilibrium equations available are 3, so 6 minus 3 is 3. The structure is statically indeterminate externally to degree 3. So we are talking about a beam problem. For a beam problem, the internal indeterminacy is 0 always. So total number of uh, 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 static indeterminacy is nothing but 3 plus 0 equal to 3. So every time when you just talk about beam problem, it is only external indeterminacy. You don't have internal indeterminacy. Okay, coming to approach 2, we try to use the equation 3m plus r minus 3j. Here number of members, okay, is 3, okay, the value of r you already have counted, 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, that would be 6. Number of joints, 4, that means you have 1 joint at uh, fixed support and 3 joints at roller supports. So you have got, okay, totally 4 joints here, just try to substitute the values and simplify and again you get a value 3 you don't have a split but we understand that okay dsi is 0 so every, all uh, this uh, the value of ds is straight away equal to the value of dsc that is external indeterminacy okay now let us try to go to a different uh, problem that we have here so it's something but rigid jointed plane frames open configuration Okay, so we also have closed configuration. So let me try to make you understand what's an open configuration connected to plane frames. Okay, so the, the definition is very similar to what we did in case of beams. You don't have any closed cells or loops, okay, in the portal frame. Okay, so we treat it as open configuration. And please understand, so again we have approach 1 and approach 2. In case of approach 1, you calculate it as external plus internal. And regarding the equations that we use here are very similar to the one that we have used in beams. Okay, what did we use in case of beams? External is nothing but R minus 3. What is R? Total number of independent reactions. And what is 3? Number of equilibrium equations. Correct? And again, we can have all three types of supports in a portal frame. That is a fixed support, a hinge support and a roller support. You normally try to take three independent reactions in a fixed support, two for a hinge support and one independent reaction in case of a roller support. Now coming to approach uh, and coming to the internal indeterminacy. So internal indeterminacy is again zero here basically because it's a open configuration uh, rigid jointed plane frame. You don't have any closed loops or cell. Correct? So DSI is always zero in such cases. Coming to approach two. You calculate this as 3m plus r minus 3j. Please understand, okay, the expression is very similar to that of the beam problem that we have worked earlier. Let me take you through some examples connected to this, okay. So I have a uh, uh, portal frame here. So please understand, if you just try to look at this, we don't have closed loops or cells. If I start from any joint, please understand, I cannot come back okay to the same joint okay without coming back retracing the path so this qualifies for a open configuration problem okay so let us try to go through this and then try to calculate degree of uh, ex, uh, total indeterminacy so it is calculated as the summation of external plus internal okay it's just just a two way single story portal frame so uh, the external indeterminacy is calculated as r minus 3 so uh, the first support is a uh, fixed support, the second support is a roller support and the third support is a hinge support. So total number of reactions we count here are 3 plus 1 plus 2, okay. So that would be 4, 4, 4 5, 6, 6 minus 3 is 3. So the total number of external interference is 3 and as we understand DSI is 0 always because it is open configuration. So DSS 3 plus 0 that is 3. 
coming to approach 2, we try to calculate as 3m plus r minus 3j, the same equation that we used in uh, beams. So number of members, okay, so that is 2 horizontal members and 3 vertical members put together is 5, r already have calculated it is 6, okay, right, and j is nothing but number of joints, okay, so 3 free joints, 3 constrained joints, so it is 6 numbers is what we have here. So just try to put the numbers here, okay, and then simplify you again get the value of ds equal to 3, right? So again, we don't have a split here because external and internal, but because it is a open configuration, you can understand that whatever you got here is totally external indeterminacy, okay, because internal indeterminacy is 0. So let me take one more interesting example, okay, for open configuration uh, portal frames. This is some uh, shaped uh, portal frame that we have here. So as you can clearly see, Right, this qualifies as an open uh, configuration because if you start from any point, you cannot come back to the same point without retracing the path coming back in the same way. So this has to be an open configuration problem. So we talk about approach one, we split into two parts. Okay, the ex indeterminacy external plus internal. How we calculate the external indeterminacy? So we calculate as r minus three. So what is r? Total number of uh, reactions that we have the supports. So we've got two fixed supports, okay, so, uh, uh, supporting the top uh, uh, horizontal members and uh, one roller and one hinge supporting the bottom horizontal members. So totally number of reactions are three here, three here, one here and two here. So totally three plus three plus one plus two, that would be nine, nine minus three, six. So the structure is statically indeterminate externally to degree 6. Coming to internal, it is 0 always, okay, open configuration. So total number of indeterminacy is 6 plus 0, that would be 6. Coming to approach 2, so we got one unified equation, which, which we write as 3m plus r minus 3j, count the number of members, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Okay, there are 5 members here. Okay, support reactions already have calculated. There is 3 plus 3 plus 1 plus 2, that would be 9. Coming to the joints, you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There are 6 joints, okay, that we have in the problem. Okay, you can easily count. Okay, so once you have this, substitute the numbers and then you try to get the value as, okay, 9. Okay, so please understand this is how you can easily calculate, okay, the a degree of uh, external, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, indeterminacy. So, uh, uh, in case of uh, these kind of examples, and uh, understand that uh, we cannot try to calculate the split, okay, in case of approach to, but again, because it qualifies as uh, an open configuration, so uh, you can uh, uh, think that all uh, uh, all these values are uh, externally, uh, external uh, indeterminacy. Now, coming to the next one, so we have got uh, closed uh, configurations. So let's try to see what is a closed configuration and how we try to calculate the degree of indeterminacy in case of closed configuration. So in approach one, we have the same thing. That is, we try to split the indeterminacy as two parts, external plus inter internal, and we try to calculate the external indeterminacy as okay r minus three. Okay, very sim similar to what we had done even in beam problem or your uh, uh, portal frames uh, open configuration. So you can have three types of supports. So that is a fixed support, a hinge support, and a roller support. And the number of reactions, okay, would be the same: three for fixed, two for hinge support, and one for uh, roller support. So these uh, numbers can help you to calculate the value of R for a given problem. Okay. Now coming to internal indeterminacy. So please understand, okay, it is not zero. Okay, unlike the previous case. Okay, in the previous case, okay, so we had taken as 0 because it was open configuration, whereas here we try to calculate as 3 times C. Please understand, it's a plane frame problem is what we're trying to consider. It's not a space frame, it's a plane frame. In case of plane frame, we try to say DSI equal to 3C. What is C? C is nothing but the number of cuts, okay, you have to make in the given problem, okay, to bring it to open configurations. Okay, so number of cuts we need to make to bring the problem to open configuration, right, okay. So uh, uh, let's try to uh, go and check and then try to see some examples, okay, that we have here. 
right? So I am coming to unified approach. Okay, we try to calculate as okay, ds equal to 3m plus r minus 3j. Please understand this expression again is uh, same. Okay, whatever we used in beams, whatever we used in rigid jointed plane frame, closed configuration, sorry, open configuration, we are using the same uh, uh, I mean, uh, equation. Okay, we are not trying to change. Okay, which gives you the total number of indeterminacy that we have in the structure. Okay, that means comprising of both uh, external and internal. So let me just try to take you through the first example that we have here. In first example, it is a two bay, two story portal frame. Two bay, two story portal frame. Okay, you have got three supports here. One is a fixed support, one is a roller support and the next one is a hinge support. Now just try to uh, check how we try to calculate here. Approach one, you split two parts, external plus internal. Okay, so let's try to calculate what is the external indeterminacy. It purely depends on the uh, support conditions. So we try to calculate as R minus 3, the same one that we used to use, uh, same expression that we had used to calculate uh, external indeterminacy in beams and portal frames, open configuration. So R depends on total number of reactions we have uh, in the supports. So you got one fixed, so 3, 1 roller plus 1, you got 1 hinge plus 2. So that would be 6. 6 minus 3 is 3. So the structure is statically indeterminate externally, okay, to degree 3. Okay, so let us try to calculate internal indeterminacy. So please understand here, as you saw, okay, this has closed loops. That means if I start from this joint, okay, I can just move up, then to the right, then come down, and again I can come back to this point. So that means it is possible for me to come back to the same point okay without retracing the path so you've got closed loops as you can clearly see here you've got one closed loop here you've got one closed loop here so what is c c is nothing but the number of cuts okay you need to make to bring it to open configuration so please understand i'm trying to make one cut here that red line and one more cut here another red line okay so please understand this is the minimum number of cuts i have to make to bring it to open configuration the moment i make a cut Please understand it converts to an open configuration portal frame. Okay, if I make one more additional cut at the top, please understand the portal frame will be divided into two parts. Okay, we are not supposed to do that. There should be some continuity established within the portal frame. Okay, so even with this cut, please understand there is a continuity okay between the members okay in the portal frame. Right? It should not get disconnected into two parts. Okay, is what you need to understand. So there are two cuts we are trying to make. So 3 into 2 is 6. So once you add this, okay, you get the total number of uh, indeterminacy as 3 plus 6 equal to 9. So in approach 2, so we just use that expression. So that is M is nothing but the total number of members we have here. So that would be uh, 10 if I am correct in this case. And R is 3 plus 1 plus 2, that would be 6. And number of joints is 9. We try to simplify get the same value 9 but again we don't have a split between external and internal indeterminacy right i hope you follow these examples so i have one more interesting example okay that is a numerical example 2 in case of uh, uh, portal frame uh, closed configuration and i'll be trying to take that discussion in the next class okay thank you